Hey, how's it going out there, everyone? Welcome back here to a Saturday. It is straight up noon out here along the West Coast, November 29th, 2025. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.1 earthquake across California. Still got uh, a little swarming going on there. In fact, we got a little newer swarm out there across the uh, just south of the border into the Baja California region. Let me show you the show you guys this here. It is uh, along the Imperial Fault that extends obviously further south, outside of Mexicali. We've got a decent amount of earthquake activity uh, in the two range and a couple ones in there as well. A um, little bit more active out here across Southern California. Um, further around the San Andreas Fault, there's that 1.1 just off the southern branch here. A little 2.2 this morning as well. Um, definitely got to watch this, folks. You know, with the ongoing swarm activity up north around the Bay Area and then an uptick going on here across Southern California here in the last couple days as well. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, we, we got to be prepared for some larger activity out here. Uh, it's very likely when we're seeing this elevated movement. Uh, the creeping section southward into the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault is super quiet right now. Uh, that's the area, you know, in between major, uh, major movement here recently. A lot of swarms up north. Got uh, some swarming activity down south here in the last couple days. Uh, and in the last week or so, we had, uh, oh, outside the San Luis Obispo area to the north, there was a decent amount of swarming. Got to go the, back the last 30 days to see all the earthquakes. We had a number of twos, even a four-pointer in there uh, to start things out uh, there across that, with a swarm there outside of Templeton back in uh, oh, about 11 days or so ago. So a lot of activity stirring up out here. Uh, you know, a really good reminder to be prepared for some larger activity. Uh, it could happen at any any moment. Uh, there around the uh, Salinas area where we've been watching this swarm in the last week or so, a couple different swarm areas out here. Uh, we do have, uh, it looks like two more from late last night. Nothing new to report here as far as anything today. Again, those are from late last night. Um, let's see the Hayward fault up here, fairly quiet. There's that earthquake on the San Andreas fault from yesterday. A couple earthquakes this morning there near the San Ramon area in the smaller microquake range. So we still got movement happening. Nothing big yet, but we do need to be on guard. Look at this earthquake up here uh, outside of Red Bluff to the west. This is actually deep, super deep underneath the area, not associated with any surface um, faults or anything like that. That's 36 miles deep into the Cascadia subduction zone. Here's a cross section of the Cascadia subduction zone. This goes for Northern California as well. This just this is uh, the Washington area. But Northern California, uh, the cutoff line here is uh, roughly down there. This is about as low as it goes here as far as going south on the map. We don't get the subduction zone underneath Sacramento or Marysville. It's roughly around this area northward. And that, uh, that's a pretty deep earthquake. So that's happening here where these purple circles are, um, where sometimes they can get a little bit bigger. That's down below, below the locked area, which is in the red here, right? The locked area begins right about the coast range there offshore to an extent where we're building up the next mega quake uh, event, which uh, again, that could happen at any time as well. Um, yeah, so we definitely got uh, some deeper activity out there going on. Um, let's see, the trimmer counts from yesterday. Let me go back here and see what we got. I showed nine epicenters down here across the southern end, but the extent of the southern end I can show you guys in this simple image to how far south it goes. That's a perfect area or a perfect map here with uh, like 56,000 slow slip events there. Uh, that shows the Cascadia subduction zone as a whole. This is where the tremor activity is stirring up. And of course, when tremor activity occurs, that's a sign that the plate here, the Juan de Fuca slab, is further subducting underneath the area to the uh, east, the North American plate. So that uh, is building up strain and stress across, across the locked area. But yeah, the extent of the southern end of the Cascadia runs, as you can see, around the where that earthquake struck today. Not a big one, 2.8, but the significance of that is the depth of that earthquake. So we do have some deeper quakes going on into the Cascadia subduction zone. 
Not a whole lot happening up here north into Washington. It looks pretty quiet out there today. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up here on the map. Uh, but uh, you know what? I better double check. I was going to skip over it. Something told me to go glance at it real quick. It only takes a second to look at it. Uh, here's the Yellowstone stations up here. That, well, there's not a whole lot going on. Maybe one or two smaller quakes here in the last few hours. But uh, looking pretty quiet out there across Yellowstone National Park, which is, of course, a super volcano. Out in Texas, uh, still rocking and rolling. Oil fields out there in the Permian Basin. Outside of OKC area as well, a little 2.1. There's some oil fields north of there. Uh, New Madrid seismic zone, pretty quiet. Uh, looking at the map here, we had some interesting activity last night with a 5.9 west of the Macquarie Island region. That is off of the plate boundary, which is a little odd. Um, just weird quake. Normally we see it around this area of the fracture boundaries here. Uh, looking at historical data in this area, as you can see, there's not a whole lot far as any major um you know adjustment going on in this area away from the plate boundary it just doesn't exist out there it looks like some maybe some smaller events north here 4.0 4.5 level uh, north of where the 5.9 struck but there's nothing of that size out here away from the plate boundary so that's why i say it's a little odd that tells me right there we could be getting pretty tight here in terms of stress and strain across the uh, New Zealand area southward along this region. If you look at the last, uh, oh, just the last seven days, even the last, you know, let's see what we got for the last 30 days or so. Pretty quiet out there across New Zealand as far as any major adjustment goes. Uh, there's been a lot, of course, all over the planet and up north. Pacific Plate moving off to the west-northwest there. Should further stress this area, which it has been northward, on the Kermadec Trench northward, but New Zealand, look at that, really nothing of any noteworthy mentioning as far as adjustment goes. So that may be an area to watch closely. We had a 4.6 and a 4.5. Uh, these fairly deep here underneath the area associated with this subduction zone. Notice the, uh, these ridges out here, the, out here, excuse me. <clears throat> this is a, uh, the uh, Hikarangi subduction zone. Uh, with this newer event, Last night, uh, I would expect this to fill in here with at least something of uh, that will show up here on the map. There's lots of areas out there that are, um, you know, primed for some bigger earthquake activity. Here's the general stress plate movement map. Notice the Pacific plate here and the kind of the off yellow moving off to the northwest there. Here's New Zealand. Strain of stress building off there to the northwest where New Zealand rides on two plates. Uh, when we get that activity off of the plate boundary near the uh, Macquarie Island region that we seen last night, that's a sign here that things are quite strained uh, there across the plate boundary. So watch New Zealand. Uh, like I say, there's not a whole lot showing up on here in the last 30 days. That's a little rare. Yes, they have some threes. Uh, they have earthquakes every day, you know, similar to California. But uh, we should have seen a little bit more. See, there's a couple threes. But nothing above, you know, any certain moderate threshold that should be taking place out there pretty soon super deep earthquake there outside of Vanuatu look at this quake 396 miles deep underneath this area most of the deeper activity here in the last week has been across the Tonga Trench but now we're starting to get some major deep earthquake activity in this area goodness so it's working its way that in this area I uh, expect stress to be building up in this region right now following that super deep earthquake that includes Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea area, Port Morrisby. Uh, let's see here. Anything else major going on? Pretty good cluster of activity there across the Taiwan region southward. This is just a crunch zone there where all the plates tend to tend to meet one another and subduct and warp and twist. And uh, they create earthquakes of various sizes every single day. It's, I, I don't think it's ever s completely quiet out here. Uh, Japan region, there's one earthquake there across the, uh, close to section A there of the Nankai Trough. That's a 4.8. Let me bring up the last day here. Yeah, just off section A, we've got a subduction zone right here. It's along the subduction zone, but not in the Nankai Trough here. Uh, 4.8, 11 miles deep there. This has been, you know, definitely an area to watch uh, for some potential mega quake. These, these subduction zones, man, they, they can definitely kick off some big earthquake activity. 
Uh, there's an older movement there from yesterday along the Curl Camp Chatka Trench. Far as uh, Alaska goes, let's go ahead and see what we got going on up here. It's been pretty active with a recent six pointer outside of Anchorage. Nothing big going on <coughs> on there for now. Excuse me. Which, uh, yeah, there's only a couple earthquakes there above 2.5 around the region. Mostly smaller microquake activity out there for now. Hawaii, some movement. Uh, looks like some twos out there. Maybe some smaller quake activity centered out here around the southeastern edge of the Big Island of Hawaii around the hill in the slump. L interesting activity taking place out here. Luckily, this is all deep movement. Um, and it's been that way over the last seven days or so. A little trail of activity leading off towards the Loihi Seamount. See the, the uh, Seamount right here. Just uh, some deeper activity, so it will be. It may take a little while before we find out what's going on here. Maybe some migration of magma happening down below for it to follow that type of path. And at that depth there, it's about 18, 20 miles deep or so uh, for some of these quakes. Uh, but it'll take a little while before we find out maybe what uh, that is leading up to. Nothing big at the moment, but uh, we could see some changes here. Um, let's see here. What else we got? As far as any major earthquake activity goes, the Mediterranean region, pretty quiet today. Only a handful of smaller quakes there. The Atlantic, older movement there from yesterday. Of course, the rift boundary activity when they, we get that separation here of the plates. That adds further stress, potentially, you know, left or right, mainly to the left here. That's where that newer event stirred up following this uh, fracture boundary quake. As expected, a 4.7 down there across oh, the uh, towards the Drake's Passage area. That is off of the um, well, Drake's Passage back over here, but it's off of the subduction zone. Here's the South Sandwich Trench subduction zone. Kind of way over here along this boundary, but might want to keep an eye on this since it skipped over it. I'm sure it's building up some strain here, but I don't think we'll see anything of an 8.0 or greater magnitude here because we just had one. Uh, back in 2019 so it's only been about six years or so since a big event happened but they you know they still get a lot of earthquake activity this is the last 30 days a bunch of fours and a bunch of fives and, and an occasional six or so um that stirs up there from time to time uh, south america area typical daily movement middle america trench a lot of activity from yesterday there some deeper movement into the middle america trench but really nothing of new uh, noteworthy mentioning here just been a pretty good swarm of activity there off the coast of El Salvador um, but nothing major going on there for now uh, taking a glance here at space weather activity the flare threat is definitely going up as you can see here on the solar flux uh, solar x-ray flux chart um, got a, a decent in flare here earlier this morning Notice that uh, climbing out of the B flare category up into the consistent C and having multiple M flares here in the last day or so, excuse me, that uh, is a very unstable sunspot creating those conditions. And that's back over here, 4294. That's going to be this sunspot back over here. A massive, literally a massive, gigantic sunspot area that does have uh, quite a bit of complexity in here. These big ones can pop off a super large X flare uh, under the right conditions out here. And that's, it's off there to the southeastern limb of the sun, but man, is that massive in coverage area. Gonna have to watch that as it rotates further into the earth directed view. I just now see barely one of the sunspots there from last time. Last time it was out here, produced a number of X flares and a bunch of CMEs. That's peeking around the corner up there really nothing expected from these sunspots but man watch this one and it looks like another newer one there center area of the um sun uh, flare threat up there 65 percent chance there for an m flare x flare around 15 percent chance or so uh, m flare at 65 c flare of course we're sizzling with c flare and almost sizzling with m flare activity no major roars in the forecast but i think it's going to be a little interesting week here coming up with that new sunspot well, old sunspot. It, it was out here many, many times here in the last, who knows, several months. Could be the sunspot from earlier this year. They just, they just keep going round and round and around. Sometimes they fade away. Sometimes they remain stable and 
and keep kicking off layers. But we'll see what it can do here this time. Uh, zero four out here, a Corona hole, getting close to uh, approaching the center area of the sun. That uh, should stir up the aurora activity once it's facing us, and we allow about 72 hours or so for the high-speed solar wind stream to reach the planet. Uh, but it's a massive coverage area. You can see it out here. There's the uh, current flaring going on from that sunspot. Look at these magnetic lines there from uh, that former sunspot that uh, produced X-flare activity weeks ago. That does look like uh, some fairly complex magnetic lines up there as well. So we're going to have a, a couple different areas to watch here closely coming up this week. Nothing major far as severe weather goes today. Looks like a little 2% chance there for some uh, tornado activity there across southeastern Texas. A little bit of wind and a little bit of health threat there today as well with those thunderstorms. As far as uh, weather patterns go out here, of course, uh, a lot of snow on the map there. Blue, gr uh, rain in the green. That uh, is going to scoot on by and a lot more colder air dipping in behind that. Eastern portion of the country looks to have a wet week out there along with some snow in the northeast. The west coast, um, well... Pacific Northwest definitely gets some moisture here. It's not until oh, about December 9th or so, December 8th, December 9th, where we'll start to see that storm track shift a little bit further south into the West Coast, adding uh, some precipitation uh, chances out there. And it look, looks pretty good right now. I'm, we need some more rain. We definitely need some more rain. Um, but you probably hear me talking a lot about the fog, right? I am a big lover of fog check out this satellite imagery out here <laughs> look look at that in the sacramento valley down in san joaquin valley as well from bakersfield even past bakersfield up to the mountains there uh, all the way up into redding california this is going to sit over the valley all day and keep us in the 40s yesterday we had a little peak of sunshine that warmed us up out of the 40s but yeah we're, we're not going to expect any uh any cold or any uh, warm conditions out here it's colder than that. This is just what they're basing their information off of, of their forecast. But it's, I guarantee you it's not. It's 44 degrees in my backyard here in uh, just outside of Chico. So with the, no way we're in the 50s out here. This is just what they're basing the temperature of their forecast on, uh, which is inaccurate. Uh, but the satellite data, that doesn't lie. It's pretty uh, thick fog bank out here. It is above the surface area. I mean, as far as visibility goes, it's up there a couple hundred feet or so, but it's it's pretty thick, and it's going to stay thick and block out that sunshine here. But it's beautiful. I, you know, you don't see that anywhere else out here across the, uh, the states. Pretty neat. All right, uh, yeah, so I hope everyone has a good day. The seismograph station's out there pretty quiet for now. Nothing major going on, but keep an eye on the West Coast still. I uh, haven't seen any major adjustment over here uh, across the western Pacific. It's still just building up out here across California. Uh, so just we got to be on guard here, folks. We'll catch you guys out here a little bit later on for the Saturday night update. Enjoy your Saturday. Have a good one.